Welcome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can get started building locally with GenAI. Now, why might you want to develop with local models as opposed to using a provider like OpenAI? Well, first of all, uh, access to these models is priced. You have to pay a subscription or you have to pay by the token, which can be very expensive when you're working on large projects. Next, you have limited data privacy unless you have a, a, you're a business customer and have a prior agreement with these companies. And finally, accessing these models requires Wi-Fi, which can be inconvenient if you're on the go and want to be accessing your models. Now, why would we want to use Olama as a specific tool for running models locally? Well, it's free and has a large variety of open source models, including things like Mistral, uh, Phi2, and Llama by Meta. Next, it runs privately and locally on your machine, uh, which is great for data privacy and working on more sensitive types of applications. And finally, it runs offline anywhere, thanks to uh, the fact that the model runs entirely upon your own GPU. Now, let's dive into how you can get started uh, working with Olama and Langchain in minutes. Let's get started by opening up our Visual Studio project. I'm going to be working within the environment uh, that I've already set up with a few prerequisites. If you want to get all of these files and this entire guide that I'm going to be following through, um, look in the link in the description and you'll find the GitHub repository available 100% for free. Now, first of all, we're going to want to install in a terminal uh, Olama. This is the first step project and takes a couple of minutes to install on a new system. After Olama has finished installing, we can start up the Olama server. It's important that this has a dedicated terminal in order to run the process, so then we can run Olama models uh, in a separate window, as I'll show you in a second. We want to type Olama serve, hit enter, and then you'll see that a server starts up. We're now going to leave this terminal alone and open a brand new terminal. in which we're going to want to install our poetry project. Now, again, uh, I'm able to just type poetry install since I'm already within a project which has an existing poetry um, uh, pyproject.toml file. So then we're able to install things like uh, Langchain and Streamlet for one of the examples we'll be doing later. Um, as you can see, I already have this installed in my system, but if you don't, then this will just take a minute or two to pull down the packages from the Python package index, and then you'll be able to continue on with the next steps. The next step being, of course, to use that same terminal that we have and pull down the phi model from uh, the Olama uh, model index. Now I'm using Phi since uh, I don't have a super beefy system and what I need is a model which is small that can fit onto my GPU's memory. You can obviously use larger models if you have later graphics cards, uh, but do bear in mind the amount of uh, GPU memory that your system has since that will be the main limiting factor in running these LLMs effectively. Now that we've pulled down Olama, we can actually uh, start running the Phi2 model within this terminal and what we're going to see is a dialogue. Now don't be confused, don't worry, the uh, dialogue is a way to interact with the Phi2 model but you can also uh, access this model via API and the way that you start the API is exactly like this. We can type in hi, we can communicate but also at the same time it's going to be listening for API requests and then we'll run those requests through the Phi2 model. Now, let's see. In order to test our model properly, what we're going to want to do is run PyTest. And the uh, project in the description has a small test suite that we're just going to run through. And what this is going to do is test that we are able to run a simple invocation uh, with the Phi2 model and that we can stream responses and that this uh, model works when we try to use it through Langchain. To dive into what the tests are actually doing and give you an indication of how you would start to use this model, let's look into these different test files. 
first of all, to invoke the model, which, uh, if you're unaware of the terminology, means to simply uh, send a request to the model and wait until the entire response has been generated before returning it to the user. It's extremely simple. You just need to import from Langchain Communities LLMs the Olama package, since that's how we're running our Phi model. Specify that we want to be using the Phi model and instance uh, create an instance of that object, and then we can just in a regular way that you would call any other uh, Langchain LLM prompt it with a text input, and then we can receive a text response. Similarly, if we want to stream the model, this is streaming it into the terminal, then we want to set a callback manager when we're creating our Olama model and have it streaming that output to the standard out callback handler. And what that's going to do is print each token individually to the terminal. Now, if we want to stream within a uh, Instead of using a callback manager, if we want to stream and say had those tokens respond in a for loop, then we can simply run it like this. All that you have to use is the lm.stream method of your Olama object, passing in your query or your prompt, and then you'll be able to iterate. This will return a generator object, which you can will then yield tokens, which you can then print or do other things with, as we'll show in the streamlet example in a moment. Now, going back to our terminal, you can see that all of our tests have passed and we're able to see that the phi stream outputs uh, information correctly. Langchain stream also outputs each word, uh, each token that the model generates. And these are on new lines because we're printing them out and that puts them onto new lines. And finally, uh, the standard invocation call also works just fine. The next thing we're going to want to do is copy this command, which is going to start up a streamlet server. And we're going to want to go back to our PyTest uh, terminal, clear it so then we can uh, see this new output properly. And we're going to just want to start up this server. Once your streamlet server is started, you'll be able to open a web page in Chrome or whatever web browser you're using, and you'll be presented with this simple chat interface. Now, um, this intro message appears to be from Phi2, however, it's actually just something that I've put there in order to prompt the user to get started with chatting with the chatbot. Let's follow one of the suggestions and see uh, the type of output that Phi2 is capable of. Remember, this is all working uh, with Langchain and Llama in the background. Now, this is interesting. Uh, first of all, it apologizes for having limited information and says, as of 2021, Neil Armstrong was the first man to walk on the moon. I feel like even after 2021, Neil Armstrong will still be the first man to walk on the moon, but there's an interesting quirk of the model and uh, its understanding of facts. Um, let's ask another question. Why is it called Edam Cheese? And here it gives us some sort of information about uh, it being from the town that it supposedly originated from. Whether that's correct or not, I have no idea, but the model seems very confident and is outputting a um, interesting paragraph that certainly seems to read um, grammatically correct and is very convincing as natural language. Let's look at something where the model will not perform quite so well. Let's ask it to create a Python function. Um, interesting. So now it's actually saying it's not entirely sure what to do. Um, this is interesting. Uh, if we try to ask it to calculate it to supply again, again, it's saying it just doesn't know. Now, this entire chat is working within a chat history, meaning that the model is able to have access to its previous responses. So maybe if we reload the web page and ask it again, it seems to think that it really is not capable. <laughs> now, this is interesting because running it in the past, I've been able to get it to at least suggest a way of generating Python code. Indeed, here we are finally. OK, so that's another thing as well. The model here does not have a deterministic output. That's what you'd expect from a large language model anyway. However, it is interesting to note that uh, sometimes it will just flat out refuse to output um, 
valid Python code or try to answer your question, and sometimes it will um, comply with your request. Now, we've got some Python code here, but we also have an interesting bit of hallucination. This is something that I found the FITU model is especially prone to. Uh, I think this is due to the sort of um, information and data that it was originally trained with. The model will sometimes write its own logic puzzles and then attempt to solve them itself. This is behavior that I've tried to circumvent with certain stop words, uh, stopping it from uh, pretending to be the user and asking itself a question, for instance. However, um, this is something that has been hard to uh, remove from my chatbot's behavior. It's important to note that this is purely a limitation of the Phi2 model. If we were to be using uh, Mistral or Llama, bigger, more complex, more capable models via Olama, um, we probably wouldn't be running into these issues. This is not a problem with Olama, this is simply a flaw with the Phi2 model. At the same time, whilst this is not necessarily desirable output, I would still argue it's very interesting output, given that it is in fact uh, well formatted, natural language, there's a lot of advantages to this model and it's a very impressive model for its size. Um, compressed, it's 1.6 gigabytes, which is incredibly small. That aside, let's take this generated Python code and copy it into a Python file in Visual Studio Code and then try to run it to see if it can actually generate valid Python code. I've copied that code generated by the Phi2 model into a .py file and I've also added this extra line to print out the output calculated by the script. Uh, let's try to run it and see if it works. Let's open a new terminal and run poetry run python pi.py and then we get this very strange output which is not at all correct and if we've taken very long to look at the uh, code that the Phi2 model were generated we'd quickly realize that this is not the correct way to calculate pi to any number of digits. Why is this happening? Well, Microsoft actually has uh, a justification for why this model is able to output syntax correct Python. It runs, it does not have uh, any errors or any warnings. However, it still outputs the wrong answer. This is an impressive thing to achieve in many ways. Uh, Microsoft says that the uh, Python training data used to train the Phi2 model was mostly documentation, meaning that whilst it will be able to output lots of valid Python, it's not necessarily been trained on a wide enough code base to make it output correct Python and write uh, novel Python functions to solve questions like, well, in our case, write me a function that can generate digits of pi. This is something to consider when you're starting to use local models, since you can end up in situations like this where your model can't actually uh, respond in the way that you need it to. This is why I think that uh, local models aren't necessarily, at least not for all hardware, replacing models like um, OpenAI's GPT-4 and 3.5, uh, Google's new Gemini models. These are all state-of-the-art models. Um, which Phi2 is not necessarily uh, in direct conflict with. That aside, it is perfect and a cheap way of interacting with um, LLMs and getting started with Langchain without having to invest any money. Also, if you do have a beefier system which can fit models like a Mistral 7 billion or a Llama, uh, Llama 2 into memory, then you could probably find that you get much better results uh, as I've said, I'm running a, uh, I believe it's a NVIDIA 1060 graphics card, which is in this day and age quite old. Um, so it can only fit a certain model size into memory anyway, um, which is fine for the purposes of testing and demonstrating. But I think for my serious LM applications, I'm still going to be using OpenAI for the, uh, at least for the continued future until it becomes more economical to invest in a several hundred pound graphics card. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and you learned something new, be sure to subscribe and comment down below what uh, videos you'd like me to make next.
I also have a bunch of tips for prompting with the Phi 2 model that I'd love to share with you. So if you're interested in that, give this video a like and I'll be sure to release the next one very soon. Thank you very much and have a great day. Happy coding.